Hello, it's Conrad Fisher broadcasting to you in this recording from Zur Med. How are you? I feel fantastic. And why do I feel so fantastic? Because I have this beautiful new book, Master the Boards in its 7th edition from me. What's contained in here? All the knowledge and beauty and grandeur of the universe, what was feared of hell and dreamt of heaven, is now in the seventh edition with 1,000 new changes compared to the last one. Oh, are we in the era of Step 1, USMLE, and Comlex Pastel? Yes, we are. How do you look to a program director? What do program directors judge you by? Where did you go to school? You can't change that. Step one scores, gone. So the last thing that matters is you knocking it out of the ballpark on step two. And I can safely say to you that if you know everything that's in this book, you will know everything you need for your test and for life. You'll know everything you need to practice goodness, beauty, truth and love and as the Quakers say you can't give unless you have and this book in all of its grandeur will make it so that you have everything you need and you will relax do you think you're going to get all the questions out of everybody using the same question bank over and over again? You think that the people who put together USMLE don't know that you're all looking at the same question bank? You think the answers are right in there and they just have to regurgitate them on the test? Naive. I never know why I don't pronounce it naive. It's spelled like naive, but that's naive. It's always better in French. So what's new in these thousand changes. Well, do you think that you ought to know that the management of asthma has completely changed? Do you think you might want to know that short-acting beta agonists like albuterol are no longer the standard of care as a rescue medication? Do you think that you ought to know that a long-acting beta agonist like formoterol or r motorol Salmeterol, but long-acting beta agonists, and inhaled corticosteroids are the standard of care for both a maintenance drug as well as a rescue medication. But I don't understand. How can that be? If it's long-acting, doesn't it take a long time to get started? No. Long-acting beta agonists are like Dr. Fisher on Saturday night. I may be long-acting, but it doesn't take me long to get started. Matter of fact, it has the same amount of time to get started as a short-acting beta agonist. It lasts longer, which is three minutes. What else about asthma has changed? Long-acting muscarinic antagonists have been added to the guidelines. Teotropium, umiclidinium, aclidinium, glycopyrrolate, umiclidinium, aclidinium, glycopyrrolate. And another thing that's changed, fraction of exhaled nitric oxide has been added to the standard of care. When you have more exhaled nitric oxide, it means you have more eosinophils in your lungs and it means that you should use the anti-eosinophilic drugs the interleukin 4 and 5 drugs so there's three major changes just in asthma major changes in pneumonia oh, azithromycin as a single drug is out no how can that be because it be azithromycin as a single drug is out it is and the standard of care for community-acquired pneumonia is now doxycycline or amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is back? Is that like me remar remarrying my ex-wife? Well, if it was effective. What else has changed? What's the, the test for Giardia? Do you want to say ovum parasite? Entamoeba histolytica, the test. Do you want to say ovum parasite? Isospia, isospora, cryptospridia, Giardia. The most accurate test for all of them is the same thing. Nucleic acid amplification testing, the NAT. What's the difference between a NAT and a PCR? Nothing, actually. But the standard of care for testing for all ovum parasite, all protozoans in your poo-poo has changed to a nucleic acid amplification test as the most accurate test. 
CHF management changed. Why? Diastolic dysfunction, so-called heart failure with preserved <coughs> ejection fraction. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, diastolic dysfunction, the standard of care is now spironolactone, a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, and maybe an SGLT2 drug changed. What else has changed? You have a person now who has reduced ejection fraction, and with reduced ejection fraction, we've added SGLT2 drugs. Ooh, let's relax and feel the intelligence. Hmm. Drinking in the knowledge of life. I'm going to know everything. Should we replace an aortic valve? With surgery? No. Catheter replacement of an aortic valve has become the standard of care. You only do surgical replacements if you can't do a catheter replacement. And that is a must-know fact. You also notice the things that we're going over here? We're not going over what's the difference between bernard Soulier syndrome and lone ganong levine syndrome. Why is a raven like a writing desk? And the answer is that it isn't. Dual antiplatelet therapy for the first three weeks. Standard of care. <sighs> Feel the burn, and that's the difference. Should we do bubble studies or buble? Well, we should neither do a buble study nor bubble studies, even if there is a patent frame in valley, until after we have excluded atrial fibrillation. And what does excluding atrial fibrillation mean? It means doing one, two, three months, six months of monitoring. Don't do the bubble study because it is wrong, the most common wrong answer. Acute labyrinthitis treatment. You're dizzy. You have decreased hearing. You've got vertigo. You spin me round, right, baby, right, round in vertigo. But acute hearing loss treatment. You might want to say meclizine, except it's not true. Meclizine is an anti-nausea drug that works for your inner ear. No, it's steroids. Optic neuritis, sudden inflammation of your optic nerve. Steroids. Facial palsy, Bell's palsy, sudden inflammation of your seventh cranial nerve. Steroids. And so labyrinthitis is now like optic neuritis of your ear. It's like Bell's ear sudden viral loss of inflammation of labyrinthitis and using steroids. Hepatorenal syndrome, which has for years had no really good therapy. Hepatorenal syndrome. Why are your kidneys sick? Must my liver sick? Why is my liver sick? Could be anything, but now my kidney is sick. Hepatorenal syndrome. Mmm. Turlipressin and albumin. Turlipressin? Tur turlet? Toilet pressin? No, turlipressin. It causes vasoconstriction and shunts blood to your kidneys and has benefit in hepatorenal syndrome. These are some of the many things that you will find in the new 7th edition of Master the Boards. Conrad Fisher, professor of medicine, residency program director at Brookdale Hospital, talking to you on Zuramed about the new beauties. Here begin the dangers. Here begin the wonders. Master the Board, 7th edition. All of my soul's knowledge, at least of medicine's part, is contained herein. It is the philosopher's stone that people went to find the holy grail, to transform evils into goodness. All that is profane becomes sacred again. Thank you.